Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salati wa salam ashraf al mursaleen Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa abidin wa madadakum al nazarakum siri ya Rasul al-Kareem ya Habib al-Azim wa ati Allah ati ya Rasul ulil amri minkum and a reminder always from myself an abdukul ajeezu, da'ifu, miskinu, zalim, wa jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah that what we just recited La la fata illa Ali wa la sayfun illa zulfiqar that there is no there is no chivalrous example better than the example of Imam Ali salam in his youthful innocence salam is futuwa and the way of knighthood, Islamic knighthood and chivalrous character which is the best of character and the best of Divinely dress and strength and might of Allah upon such a noble reality. And la sayfun la zulfiqar and there is no sword that can help anyone on this earth more powerful than the sword of the zulfiqar. And Everything is by imitation until the servant tries to reach to that reality. And alhamdulillah that Allah dressing us and blessing us to be from the Naqshbandiya tariqah and to be from Ahlul Bayt and under the dress of Imam Ali salam and under the realities of Imam Ali salam. And that that example of futuwa that Allah has enrolled us all in that school of noble character and knighthood. In the days that are coming there's not a, a weapon and this is not a war of weaponry that people become worried and they think what weapon do they need to safeguard themselves. But this battle that's coming is of an unseen battle. And already the world is hiding in their homes behind masks and veils and sprays and lights for an unseen enemy. And Allah gave us the best of example, the noblest of souls under the example of Sayyidina Muhammad and the gift that he gave to all creation in the bloodline in the reality of Imam Ali salam that this reality of noble character, the example of good character and futuwa that to be dressed by Allah's might and majesty but to have the best of humble character. That the, the lion of Allah and the example of that nobility is that with every might and majesty that Allah dresses the servant that not to be used on humanity. And that's not to be used to vindicate oneself, that's not to be used to, to, to glorify oneself and all of these testings and these teachings were for that example that whatever difficulty comes to you remain as best as you can to be silent. Take a path in which to be humbled and humbled by Allah Whenever somebody wants to launch an attack remain silent. You don't need to vindicate yourself, you don't need to justify yourself, you don't need to use your power against Allah's creation, against insan and trying to raise oneself. Futuwa comes to teach that with whatever Allah dresses of might and majesty is to have the best of character. And that's why this live loving example of Sayyidina Muhammad and these oceans of ishq and muhabbat and compassion and mercy and that to be passionate and compassionate they're all based on that reality that the servant is dressed from Allah's might and majesty but at the same time the servant is dressed by Allah's oceans of jamal and, 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 and beauty. And, and subtlety and patience and good character. We pray that Allah dress from these realities and give us the understanding of why the school of adabs are to dress us, to humble us, to ask us to have good khuluq and character. 
The episode that aired today was very beautiful in that example of these difficulties that are coming and the best of, of character is of the noble character of the heavens. And through that humility and through the good characteristics who comes to us is Baba Hu. That when Prophet described that knowledge is power and I am the city of all knowledges and realities and awliya come and teach that Prophet is the city of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Because every uloom must start and is from the oceans of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. So when Prophet is teaching for us, I am the city of all knowledges, it's the code for I am the city of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. And teaching for us that and the gate, the doorkeeper of that reality, Baba Hu is Imam Al Ali salam. And that for us then is that understanding that we're trying to ask and enter into these city of knowledges, these oceans of realities. We described last night and people that commented they, they are now clicking to understand what's called the timeless reality. Tafakkur, meditation, all of these practices are timeless realities. And San and people want to live their timed reality, they want to live their material life. And that time only exists on this plane of material life and it becomes physical, every understanding for them is physical. Prophet gave to us this gate and said that, Mawt al qabl and mawt that take the path of death before death, meaning for us that reach towards the reality and the knowledges of light. What scientists are studying of quantum, kuntum is of the realities of light, the reality of the atom, the reality of the molecules, the reality that that every energy is making everything to manifest, every light that we see it's a manifestation of an energy. They found that energy is actually a sound. So the manifestation then equals to energy, these energies are actually sounds. All of these are the studies of light, all of that reality opens to the servants who enter into timeless realities. And the timeless reality can only be achieved by the one whom gives themselves to a state of death in which they meditate, they contemplate, they control the senses of the body, they control their body desires, they, they train themselves to be able to sit for a few minutes, close off the busy world, train their breathing on a slowed down pace of breathing listen to all the waswases and begin to clean them, clean them, clean them until they find a state of peace within their physicality. If they can reach that state of peace within their physicality that they're comfortable with their inner being and their being, then they learn how to make their madan and ask for support, a support that I don't have myself my Lord. That from these servants that you've given these lights and these realities that they to be all around me and send their fires and reflection like their satellite, like their mirror, send their reflection upon me to be like a catalyst for me to reach towards that reality. And then they begin to cook and send a light and an energy and the servant feels themselves heating up. Means now their soul is getting more and more power, more and more power from its source of origin from Allah as the soul becomes more powerful it's either these two realities, either you want to give to your physicality and your soul is dying inside and they become very physical, very much ananiya that it's me and this is a pharaonic kingdom where everything is about the here and the now and there is no hereafter. That Imam Ali salam comes to teach that you want to reach to the city and the Madinat al Im, the city of knowledges in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam's holy soul. You want to enter, you have to go with your soul into that presence. So if you take your pharaonic existence 
and we keep crushing it and meditating and, and, and contemplating that I'll remain silent, I don't have to have anger, I can control my bad desires, my bad characteristics, I do my wazifas, I do my awrads, I do my practices. As this physical being is, is dying inside, what happens is then the spiritual being is growing and becoming empowered. When that soul begins to take place and take control, you have now entered into a timeless dimension. What the soul understands from the kingdom of light and all this kingdom of realities is of a timeless reality. That's why all their teachings are so significantly different than the physical realm. And the people who read Qur'an from the physical realm only read Qur'an about themselves and their physicality. When they read Qur'an from a timeless reality, they understood Allah has no time. And we've explained many times, then what is 10 salawats? When Prophet described that, if you make one salawat upon me, Allah sends my soul to make 10 salawats upon you. When Allah in the world of timelessness that has no time, what does 10 mean? What do all these realities mean? When we say that Imam Mahdi is coming, the servant who enters into this meditative state and their physicality is always trying to grab them and bring them back not to meditate because they are then the hayat dunya they're too much of their dunya life, their material life. When they're reaching this state of death, the body is like, ah, I don't really care anymore for anything. And I want to reach towards your reality my love, my Lord, I have this immense love for you to reach, to reach, to reach. All their desires are dropping, as a result they're breaking free from the gravitational pull of their body. As a result their soul is, is elevating into the Divinely Presence and Allah begin to dress, dress the lights of heavens upon that soul and it begins to understand from timeless realities. If Allah has no time then what is the understanding of being with Sayyidina Mahdi Why does everyone need the whole world to be perishing and to be collapsing to be with these personalities and this reality? I mean Sayyidina Mahdi must always be on this presence, must always be a reality for this inhabitants of this dunya. As soon as they leave their physical understanding and enter the realm that's timeless, Sayyidina Mahdi must be there, Sayyidina Isa must be there, all awliyaullah must be there, all Ahlul Bayt must be there, all Ashab and Nabi must be there and the Sultan above all of them, the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad must be there. And that's where Allah wants us to be. Don't live your life only for the material and for the material understanding, your physical understanding. Leave this realm and enter the realm that is timeless. In this realm of timeless there is no beginning and there is no end. If they want to teach you from the knowledges of the beginning, you'll be taught from the knowledges of the beginning. If they want you to witness something that comes on Armageddon and on the last days, Yawm al-Qiyamah, Yawm al-Mashar, you'll learn from Yawm al-Mashar, you'll see what happens. We've had many incidents, incidences where people have contacted and seen and somebody recently saw a video of a tree being destroyed. And this was a, a holy tree that was planted by awliyaullah at a maqam and they saw them butchering the tree, smashing the tree, this Hizb shaitan and these people who go and pretend like they're for Allah and they say shirk and shirk and shirk. And they were so saddened by what happened and in the course of the zikr Allah opened for them, ulum al-awwaleen wa akhireen. When in an instant their soul saw what Allah will do to them on the day of judgment and the soul, the tree began to have a form and the tree began to make a sama and with every branch of the tree it grabbed the neck of one of these people who either cut it down, planned on cutting it down, encouraged the cutting of it down, means Allah gave the tree the right of revenge for what was done against it because it's not a regular tree. 
that was a blessed location, a blessed reality and with each branch of the tree it grabbed the neck of these servants and was whirling and they were wishing for death but death was not given to them. They were being punished by the tree and just eternal turning and whirling of difficulty. And that's what awliyaullah mean, the knowledges they teach you will witness them. It's not a philosophy class. When you connect in the realm of timelessness, whatever you're being taught of the past you will go back and witness that reality because this is Ahlul Dhawq, these are the people of taste. All the uloom and knowledges that they begin to read and hear and understand Allah wants their knowledge to be real and either take them back or front and say, look if it's an issue that's coming for Yawmul Mashar, Allah will show them, do you want to see what this tree is going to do to these people? Do you think anyone has the right to abuse nature, abuse anything in creation? What that creation will give as a right over that insan for what they've done to them? Allah will show them and the knowledges of the past amongst the Prophets and the saints if Allah wound Allah will take their soul to be present at that association and hear at that time what knowledges were being conveyed and what was the reality of that knowledge, that uloom that was being taught. So means in this realm that's timeless is the realm of truth. The board of this dunya is all falsehood, it's all everything is temporary and Allah says everything temporary zahukan is crumbling. Don't base our lives and our knowledge and our time and our happiness on something that is crumbling. But use this time that we have to rise, rise to the dimension that is timeless. And that's when Futuwa and Imam Ali is teaching that have the chivalrous character, the good example of knighthood in which you are knights of the heavenly kingdom, in which you honour everything from the king, the, the service to the Sultanate of Sayyidina Muhammad and your only weapon is your love and your heart. Through your eyes will be fierce enough light that everything can be destroyed through the eyes of that servant, through the prayer of that servant and the movement of the hand of that servant, they don't need a single weapon. They don't need a weapon for anything coming upon this earth, they are the walking weapons of Allah Through their eyes comes an immense fire, through their whole support are dragons from Jahannam to enter upon the earth and to bring Allah's qadab and anger and azab upon the earth. They don't need anything of any material, they only need Allah's support, majesty and might upon their soul. When Imam Ali is teaching for us that enter into futuwa, enter into good characteristics, enter into being tested with your good character, good character and there is no sword but the Zulfiqar. Why? Because the Zulfiqar we taught before is La ilaha illallah and then it loops to Muhammadun Rasulullah. Means that their sword is the kalima of Allah the kalima that cleans, the kalima that purifies, the kalima that is the tawheed and the oneness of Allah their sword is La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah And where you hold the sword is the La ilaha illallah he, the he which is the who that connects to the Mim Muhammadun Rasulullah. So means they're the Ahli who. When Imam Ali Salam teaching for them that, come to my gate and there is no sword but my sword that I give to you, means I dress you with the reality of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah I want to make you from Ahli Hu, that you are the people of Hidayah, the He for Hu, that your five senses are alive. Your five senses are open and your five senses are taken over by Allah in Hadith Al-Qudsi that I am the seeing of this servant, be careful for what they look at you, they look at you with the light of Allah I am the hearing of this servant means they hear with Allah's power. 
they breathe with Allah's power, they speak with Allah's might and majesty, their hands are the kingdom of Allah SubhanAllah bi yadihi mulk. Glory be to the one whose hands have been dressed by Allah's hands and their qadam and their foot is on the steps of Allah through Sayyidina Muhammad Muqaddam al Sadiq, Muqaddam al Haqq. That everywhere they move, they move for the sake of Allah and Allah says, so much so that I love them and they entered into these oceans of love that whatever they want kun fayakun and so much so that they become Rabbaniyoon, these are the lords of the heaven. This is the sword that Imam Ali Salam is giving to us and teaching us that teach people they have to have good characteristic, the two are, are, are the mix. How can you give this sword of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah and yet the character to be dirty and to be bad and to be filled with anger and bad character? So the two are the mix, the good character has to be established and as a result Imam Ali Salam to give them the sword, the sword of majesty and might. And this is what creation is in need of from what's coming, not a single weapon is necessary. For what's coming upon this earth of unseen and unseen difficulties, they need the support of Allah's oceans of tawheed. Not the tawheed that the people think that they're saying by their mouth and their bad character and the one telling you has not even a head cover or a beard. But the oceans of the real oceans of tawheed in which they understood there's nothing but Allah and there's nothing existing but Muhammadun Rasulullah, not you and not me are in existence but that we exist within the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah. So then who holds the sword of La ilaha illallah? That's all that matters for us to understand there's not a three but there's only Allah and his reflection is known as Muhammadun Rasulullah Subhanahu wa rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen Muhammadillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Barakha shafati ya Rasul Kareem. InshaAllah let's do Nadi Ali from the Salawat book. Click the link now to subscribe.